As you may have guessed, I don't think there is anybody in my family who has ever had a portrait done, let alone a portrait that will be hanging in the National Gallery. I'm also thinking about all of the young people, uh, particularly girls and girls of color, who in years ahead will come to this place and they will look up and they will see an image of someone who looks like them hanging on the wall of this great American institution. I know the kind of impact that will have on their lives because I was one of those girls. You exist in our minds and our hearts in the way that you do because we can see ourselves in you. The act of Michelle Obama being her authentic self became a profound statement that engaged all of us. Because what you represent to this country is an ideal. How about that? That's pretty sharp. What I was always struck by when I, whenever I saw his portraits was the degree to which they challenged our conventional views of power and privilege. Um, and the way that he would take extraordinary care and precision and uh, vision in recognizing the beauty and the grace and the dignity of people who are so often invisible in our lives. His initial impulse maybe in the work was to also elevate me and put me in these settings with you know, partridges and scepters and <laughs> thrones and chiffrobes and uh, <laughs> mounting me on horses. <laughs> And I had to explain that I've got enough political problems without you making me look like Napoleon. We've got to bring it down just a touch. So how do you explain that a lot of that is just simply not true? <laughs> our humanity. This is our ability to say, I matter. I was here. Uh, the ability to be the first African-American painter, to paint the first African-American president of the United States is absolutely overwhelming. <laughs>